There's a video coming soon. A video about the catastrophic failure of the RAID array on our 20 terabyte SSD server codenamed WANIC. But before we do that video, why don't we take a moment to introduce to you the newest member of the Linus Media Group server family, the one I was literally in the process of backing WANIC up to when the failure happened. Meet Clover Server. The Logitech G303 features a lightweight design, an advanced optical sensor with Delta Zero technology for precise tracking and RGB lighting to match your setup. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So I think a video about Clover Server has to start with the differences between backup and redundancy. Redundancy protects from a hardware failure to an extent, but not from accidental deletion, encryption by ransomware, vandalism, or what I would call catastrophic hardware failure. The benefit of redundancy is that it's real time. A single drive failure in a RAID 5 array, for example, would allow the business to keep operating completely normally and would result in zero lost data, as long as it could be offloaded or the RAID array could be rebuilt. With backups, you'll only get back whatever was in your last periodic backup. So Clover Server wouldn't have prevented any data loss from the catastrophic RAID failure that recently occurred with Wanix Server. One of the RAID cards crapped all over the inside of its pants, took its pants off and started swinging them around. What it would have prevented was projects that have already been shot weeks ago, but not yet edited, like this video that we had planned for Channel Superfun, from being entirely lost. So let's take a look at the hardware. Clover Server is using a quad-core Xeon processor on an Asus P9D-M server motherboard with 32 gigs of Kingston ECC DDR3 memory to give me the best possible stability. Of course, the redundant power supply from iStar USA helps with that, and the toolless case, well, okay, that's just for convenience, but the hot swappable drive bays are really, really nice. Ignore that RAID controller you see in this footage, that's gonna be replaced with an LSI HBA, and I've also added a 10 gigabit network card to handle the workload alterations that I've made since I built this box. For storage, I've gone with eight of Seagate's eight terabyte enterprise capacity drives. These suckers do in the neighborhood of 200 megabytes per second and have a rated mean time between failure of two million hours. However, whatever their reliability might be, in this particular application, where the intent is to achieve reasonable speed, but more importantly, extraordinarily safe backup. Remember, this will be the only copy of some data in the event of Wanik pooping itself again. I'll be giving up a lot of my capacity to the redundancy gods, as well as the speed gods. So, like most of our servers these days, the software side of things starts with a fresh install of LimeTech's Unraid, which, by the way, they have sponsored projects of ours, but this isn't one of them. So we'll be setting up two of our eight terabyte drives in what is effectively an eight terabyte RAID 1 array configuration. And then we'll take the other six in a ButterFS RAID 10 for 24 terabytes of redundant storage. The plan for the eight terabyte array is pretty straightforward. I'm going to set up a Windows Server 2012 R2 Essentials VM, a pretty simple process since I don't have to do any video card pass through or anything like that. If you wanna learn more though about Unraid VM setup, you can check out our two gamers, one CPU video here. So I chose Essentials 2012 R2 because even though it's quite expensive at about $500 for a license, the way it handles incremental backup and restore functionality for up to 25 computers is really slick and seamless. Not to mention that if we ever wanted to move to a domain setup, it includes Active Directory domain services, although for now we're still using a work group. So I did have to use this simple workaround to enable the nightly backup functionality without requiring the PCs to join a domain. From there, you download and set up the connector software, and uh, this is basically a quick look at the dashboard that allows you to set the schedule for nightly backups, how long you want to keep them for, and change the storage destination to the secondary VDisk that I created for those backups. So seven terabytes should be lots for our SSD-equipped workstations here in the office. 
All right then, Linus, but what about that 24 terabytes of RAID 10 storage on this machine? Great question. I've got two plans for that. Number one is to use Beyond Compare, a great piece of software that compares the structure of two directories and allows you to set up all kinds of rules for copying one way, copying the other way, or synchronizing between them. And I'm going to use that to do incremental synchronizations. So this is kind of somewhere between redundancy and backup, since I plan to run them every 30 minutes or so, and I'm setting up the relationship so that a deleted file on Wanik will be removed on the Clover server side as well. Then, every night, I will set up a backup operation from Clover to the vault, where files deleted from Wanik and therefore Clover server will not be removed from the vault. So we have somewhere to turn to if we accidentally delete something major. So those operations can both be scheduled simply with Windows Task Manager, uh, super handy, and then a monthly or whenever we feel like it cleansing of the deleted stuff on the vault can be done using Beyond Compare as well. Now this isn't a perfect solution, but ButterFS snapshotting is still a ways out, so it'll have to do for now, and we've got lots of space on the vault, so I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, that still only accounts for about another 20 terabytes of the space on Clover, so we've got 5 terabytes of wiggle room. For that, plan number two. I'm going to be leveraging my CEO-ness to use that extra space as an off-site backup for my NAS at home using CrashPlan. Normally, I'd actually have to run CrashPlan from within a Windows environment or at least something with a GUI. But the benefit of using Docker within Unraid to do it, I do plan to do a full video about Docker containers and why they're awesome in the future, is that if Windows borks up, Crash plans backing up of key files, there's not enough leftover space for my whole home array, will be uninterrupted. Normally, setting up crash plan on a headless machine is kind of a nightmare, but Unraid's way is a bit more elegant. So in summary, there's three main points for this video. One, backups are important. Two, create two backups of something that's important during a data migration, and three, more details on the catastrophic raid failure to come. Speaking of catastrophic, have you ever been in a situation where you're like, I want to watch American Netflix, but I am not American. Or I am American, and I'm not in America. Well, TunnelBear is the easy-to-use VPN app for that and all kinds of stuff. TunnelBear lets you tunnel to 16 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as if you are in a different country. They've got apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and they've also got a Chrome extension. When you pick a country and turn TunnelBear on, two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched so that you show up as if you are in that other country. And they've fixed all the annoying stuff that's frustrating about VPNs while offering 500 megabytes of data for free to try it out with no credit card required. Then, if you want to upgrade to unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash LTT, which is linked in the video description. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon. Instructions for how to do that are up there. Buying a cool shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum. You get a cool little contributor badge. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So check out that little button in the top right corner to see our video on channel Super Fun, where uh, Taryn and Luke compete to see who can wrap presents with drunk goggles on the best. Trust me, it's better than it sounds. <laughs>